The total body count for the 90 years between 1917 and 2007 is approximately 148 million dead at the bloody hands of 52 atheists. Three times more than all the human beings killed by war, civil war, and individual crime in the entire 20th century combined. The historical record of collective atheism is over 182,000 times worse on an annual basis than Christianity's worst misdeed, the Spanish Inquisition. If one considers the statistically significant size of the historical atheist set and contrasts it with the fact that not one in a thousand religious leaders have committed similarly large-scale atrocities, once might be an accident, even twice could be a coincidence, but 52 incidents in 90 years reach off causation. These statistics are from conservapedia.com. The title of our show is Atheism is in the Bible. Our guest David Harrison became a devout atheist when the church he attended did not prove to him that God is not dead. Today he is with I Am. David, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. So David, why did you become an atheist? Wasn't your family Christian? Yes, they were. And actually, I grew up in a very solid uh, Christian home and a Christian church in, the, uh, in Kentucky, which is, by the way, paradise. Uh, if you ever want to go see the tomb of the guy on the cross next to Jesus, just go to what? Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, what That's just a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kentucky is paradise. That's where I grew up. Uh, uh, but okay. it, it was a very fine church with very fine uh, parents. Um, they emphasized what should be emphasized in the church is take it by faith. But some of us, not all of us, probably not even most of us, but some of us need some kind of compelling uh, rationale reason for taking it by faith. So, yes, they lived a good life. Yes, they uh, loved me. Yes, it was great. But they gave me no compelling evidence that God existed. What compelling evidence is it that you were looking for? I didn't know. I was 17, 18, <laughs> 19 years of age. So you what had you know? no idea what you're looking for? No, I just knew that, that, that I would ask them questions, and they would just say, take it by faith. And for somebody like me, taking it by faith is the secondary goal. So what were some of your questions? Well, the question is, is there a God? I mean, how do you know mm. there's a God? And how do you know that the scriptures are really God's word? How do you know that Jesus really existed? All of these things. But the oh. real core of it is, huh. is there a God? And the atheist, though intellectually not credible, because the atheist begins with the assumption there is no God, since you can't prove he exists or not exists, then just the very statement is flawed we're more uh, accurately called moral atheists. We don't want there to be a God because if there is a God, we answer to him. So ultimately I decided that, but uh, wow. I went so on. So you were at your church, your church did not give the answers, your parents right. did not give the answers you wanted, right? or they might not even have known how to respond Correct. other than have you faith. So you chose to become an atheist. Correct, over time. Wow. First a skeptic, then a cynic, then an atheist. So one, two, three, yeah. there's an order that goes on. For me. And then, um, you know, I heard somewhere that you were actually not an atheist that was just an atheist. You were an atheist that was going to tell Christians. Oh, I was an aggressive atheist. I was in your face atheist. I knew more about what I didn't believe in than what they knew about what they did believe in. In fact, when I ultimately came to Christ after I got out of the army, uh, and moved to California. I want to get back for a moment first okay. to the atheism. So you went to the army, you said, mm -hmm. and did that actually, because you know you deal with some, some serious stuff in the army, mm -hmm. did that draw you closer to God or even further oh, no, away? No, no, no. First of all, I was an army intelligence, which is kind of an oxymoron, <laughs> so I never really <laughs> got in any big issues. I was over in Germany. Uh -huh. uh, so no, there was nothing there except for the opportunity to vent my venom reference to Christianity. So, you know, there are a lot of people that are Christians there, and I would laugh at them and mock at them and ridicule them and ask them questions they couldn't answer. Wow. And uh, that just emboldened me. It, it strengthened my resolve to, um, to just do away with Christianity with anyone I could talk to. Now, if I would have been your mom at that moment, every time you would come home, uh, with, with, I would have... Billy Graham playing on, on the air. I would have Christian music. I would say, do you want to go to church? Were your parents anything like that? Oh, yes. In fact, you read my mail. 
What? My mother, every time I would eat, I would come home every Sunday and have dinner with her. And I, often I would bring a friend. And every Sunday that Billy Graham was on, he was on the TV, blasting nicely. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, and my mother was a very charismatic woman. She uh -huh. wasn't a crazy woman, but she was very charismatic, very authoritative, but didn't push the boundaries. In fact, one time I said, I started arguing with her about Christianity. And one day she said, Dave, I don't know the answers to your questions, but I do know God exists because I talked to him this morning. Wow. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for her. Uh -huh. um, so that, 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 tugged at me, though I just smiled, chuckled, laughed it off, went about my life. But ultimately, when I did come to Christ and I bowed before an altar at a church, God reminded me of four or five different instances in my life, and that was one of them wow. that actually was a part of wow. me coming to Christ. So um, I, I remember one day Chase saying to God, I don't want you in my life today. I can do it on my own. I only had one day like that. I was a Christian, I was young. I was 18, 19 years old, or I think I was a little older than that. I said, I don't, I was 30. Don't want you in my life for one day, about that time somewhere. And the day was awful. So what I had was me and nothing else. And is that what an atheist experience to just have nothing to fall back on? Well, that's, that's a very common Christian comment because, you know, if you've ever had haagen ice cream and then you don't have any kind of ice cream, then you know what you're missing. But if you've never really had a personal relationship with Christ, you don't know what you're missing. So you okay. don't go along every day going, oh, there's something missing in my life. You, you don't even know there's something missing most of the time. Sometimes in the darkest night when you're sitting there by yourself wondering what is going on, you might yeah. think of that. But generally speaking, you don't because you don't, you've not experienced that. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more because you ended up radically changing and oh, yes. it almost seems impossible and there might be some of you listening right now saying wait a minute what is this about there's no God and if there's a God where is he and show him well we're going to show him stay tuned we will be right back there are many times that while I was mentoring in juvenile hall that I would hear the word shut up and I was like what and I was just like, what are you? And it kind of threw me, right? But it wasn't the negative. It was actually a positive. And I am here to tell you right now, shut up. He did what? And we're talking about God right now. We are going to start radio. We want to bless you. We want to encourage you. And even if you're on the road or just at home doing cleaning or whatever, we now want to minister to you in a brand new way. And it's not like we asked for it. It was basically offered to us. So what is that going to mean? That you're going to hear real new situations that will encourage you, that will bless you, that will strengthen you, and that will help you. And it will help you to see that you too can start living the abundant life and no longer have to stay stuck. BarbTV.org to find out how. On atheist.org, it states, atheism is not an affirmative belief that there is no God, nor does it answer any other question about what a person believes. It is simply a rejection of the assertion that there are gods. Atheism is too often defined incorrectly as a belief system. To be clear, atheism is not a disbelief in gods or a denial of gods. It's a lack of belief in God's. Now, this is what you believe, David. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. But then what I'm hearing is if there is no God, there is free reign in whatever you want to do because it doesn't matter because there is no consequences. Or do you look differently at that? Well, of course, when you're an atheist, you do look differently than that. But when you get the broader picture and you begin to understand the core value of an atheist is technically, since he can't know whether there's a God or not a God, there, he doesn't want to have one because if, we, if there is a God, there may be moral requirements, moral standards, and we don't want that. We don't want someone else to tell us what to do and what not to do. And so we just simply reject the very idea that someone has the authority to do that. Wow. And that's at the core, really, of atheism. And when you get right down to it, as I did, um, uh, when I came to Christ, you have to struggle with, why do I believe that God doesn't exist? 
And when I began to wrestle with that through a process of things, which I'll share in a couple of minutes, I came to that conclusion that there is no credible explanation for, ex for existence, for intelligent life, if you do not go backwards from that to intelligence creates intelligence, life wow. creates life. Life doesn't come from non-life. Intelligence doesn't come from non-intelligence. That's logically impossible. Wow. And I'm listening to this and my head is spinning saying, it's such a different concept, you know, it comes from such a different angle. What turned it around for you? What was it that you changed your mind about atheism? Well, you know, if you don't have Christ in your life, if you don't have God in your life, right. then all you have is you. All you have is your own thoughts and your own experiences, and they very quickly become boring and meaningless. Really? So you find yourself, or at least I found myself, uh, seeking experiences. And so I, I wanted to go to jail. So I did something to go to jail. Not what? because I was a bad guy. It's just because I wanted to know what it was like to go to jail. And uh, I, I thought, well, stealing thing. What would it be that like? So I would steal something. Then I would give it back. It wasn't about stealing it for something. I just wanted that experience. And I remember on a train in Germany, I was riding on the train. And in those days, there was an was a open space between the cars. And uh, you could get off or on the train. And I, I grabbed a hold of the, the rail there and I leaned out, w my right foot anchored, my left foot swinging in the wind, my left hand swinging in the wind. And I said to myself, um, you know, there's one experience I've never had. Letting and that's go. death. What? And so if I let go, I'll die and that'll be an experience. And a little voice said, yeah, but then that'll be the last one. So I decided not to do that. So uh, an atheist really has no long-term purpose other than a protracted one. I mean, he may care about his family. He may care about, you know, um, achieving something. But the bottom line is, without God, there is no ultimate meaning, no ultimate purpose, and no ultimate answers. There are only uh, limited space and time answers. So what turned it around for you? What? Well, I, as I began to experience life and become more and more disillusioned, I got to a point where I, when I looked myself in the mirror at night alone, I was frightened. Really? I knew. What were you I, frightened of? Just what I saw. Or what were you seeing? Just, it scared me. I had no rational reason for it. I just looked at myself and go, oh, that is scary. So <laughs> uh, one night I went home uh, with my friend to have dinner at my mother's house, mm -hmm. and he began to brag with me uh, about how much we had been drinking and carousing. and. My, I knew my mother knew all of that, but I just didn't want to rub it in her face. So I said, cool it, cool it, be quiet. And she looked at me and she says, that's all right, Dave. You're going to change, and soon. <laughs> now, she wasn't one to come up with that stuff unless she had she heard. some kind of inside story. Yeah. That was on a Sunday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. I had the exact same dream, three what was your dream? The dream is she and I were, are going into a, um, an office complex because I was my goal was to become wealthy through real estate. Uh -huh. We went into the office complex. They sat me down in this big, massive reception area, and then she was uh, ushered into this beautiful office, but I wasn't allowed to go. And each time she came out and says, yep, you're going to change, and he says so. You're going to change, and he says so. Three, uh, Mon Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. So Thursday morning, I wake up with my three friends, and we you know, actually, we either drank or smoked breakfast. I mean, that's just the life right. that we lived. And I was preoccupied, and they said, what's up? And I told them about my mother, and I told them about the dream. And I said, if there's one chance in a million that I'm wrong, just one, then I owe it to her, I owe it to me, to dig into this a little more. So I called up my boss, and I said, when can I have a week's vacation? So he said, well, start next Monday. Now, why did you want a week off? because I needed to reconsider this. Oh, you needed time away I from distractions. I needed time away from everyone. And so he gave me a week off. I went and stayed at a place all by myself. And I decided for that moment, just for that week, I would be the angel's advocate instead of the devil's advocate. But how do you do that when you're an atheist? Yeah, I know. But see, when you're an idiot, like I was. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you just simply <laughs> take one step at a time. So how can you be an angel's advocate if you're really the devil's advocate at the same time? How does that work? That takes a choice. I said, if my arguments are legitimate and valid and accurate and true, they will hold up even in my, un, my own scrutiny. So I began to ask huh. myself questions. Does this work? Is this true? And it came down to that, uh, it, you know, intelligent life can only come from intelligent life. Uh, something doesn't come from nothing. And so I remember bowing. Uh, I got down on my knees and said, I don't know who to call you. I don't even know what to call you. So I'm just going to call you God because I don't have another name. I know this much. I know that intellectually it is credible for me to believe in you. And it's not credible for me to not believe in you. I'm going to stop you right there. Can you imagine? <laughs> what do you do with that? How do you function? How do you move forward? Do you intellectually believe in God or not? Stay tuned. We'll have the answer soon. Are you one of those that makes the same mistakes over and over and over again? Do you feel big down in life and you want to get it, but you're just kind of stuck? I have great news for you because we have created for you something brand new. We're going to teach you how to dress for success and to put on the armor of God. And for you specifically now, we have a free download that you could get from our website at barbtv.org that will help you to dress for success. How do you put on the full armor? How do you put on the shoes of peace? What does the sword of the spirit mean? And can you truly have a word from God, a rhema word that you could fight God's way instead of your own way? I look forward to teach you, to equip you, and to show you in this free download that there is hope for you. Go to barbtv.org. So David, you had an encounter and you were going to be an angel's advocate. How did you go about this? Well, it was a week long, pretty much a week long. And I just rehearsed all of the things that I had thought about God and argued with myself uh, huh. all pretty much most of the week. Uh, and I was alone the entire week. Uh, and there came a point in which at each step of, the, uh, of my journey, the logic of my atheism did not hold up even under my own scrutiny. But you see, we often believe what we want to believe, and the facts don't necessarily matter. Really? Because it actually talks in the Bible about atheisms. Mm -hmm. And I um, just want to read that scripture to you, if I can find it. It's in Psalm 53, verse, uh, verse 1, and it says, If only fools say in their hearts there is no God. Yes. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. Mm -hmm. But that was not your perception yet at that moment, was it? No, of course not, because I didn't, I didn't know the Bible, didn't believe the Bible, so I didn't think so didn't biblically, so to speak. Yeah. Right. The Bible is true objectively, whether we know it or not. But if we don't know that we don't know it, then we just carry on like it doesn't exist. Right. And, so, and to me, I'm thinking all us Christians will use those kind of quotes mm -hmm. to atheisms no. and they'll fight right for an back, atheist, right? For an atheist, it's meaningless dribble. Right. So, um, but I came to that point and I said, it, I'll call you God and I'm going to move forward from here, but I'm going to take nothing for granted. I grew up in a good Southern Baptist home. And I knew that you were supposed to read the Bible and you were supposed to go to church and you were supposed to get baptized and you were supposed to serve in the church. So all the things I had learned as a kid, I said, I'm going to start off there because I want to do my part. But I really need you to speak to me and really need you to let me know that I'm on the right path. And so I did that. I, I went home to my mother uh, and said, I've, I've come to Christ. I've come to God. I hadn't come to Christ yet. I've come to God, and now I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to do all the things that I've been told I need to do. But know this, if it doesn't hold up under scrutiny, I will not do it. And so, boom. And I remember I went to church several times, and uh, there was what they had altar calls in those days, if you came down, if you wanted to accept yeah. the Lord or yeah. get prayer or whatever. And I went down, and I knelt down at this uh, altar, and the Lord literally spoke to me clearly and brought to my mind a that Sunday school teacher in the fifth grade that walked around yelling and screaming saying Jesus loves you Jesus loves you Jesus loves you take it by faith take it by faith take it by faith why her 
it was a him, That's and a him. I don't know, but there are, there are three or four images that he brought to my mind. The second one was a guy in the military in the bathroom, and he's sitting there <laughs> witnessing to me in the bathroom. And I said, if you believe what you believe, why are you here? And he said, he bowed his head, and he said, I'm not asking you to follow me because I'm a failure, but I'm asking you to think about Christ because he is not. So I rejected that, of course. Then there was the lieutenant on the ship coming home from Germany when I was getting out of the armory. He witnessed to me. Then, of course, there was, my, there was a track. Believe it or not, there was a track in the field. I worked for the telephone company, and I was walking along checking the lines to make sure they were correct, and there was a little track in the field, and I picked it up, and I read it, and I threw it down and stepped on it and laughed and walked off. And then, of course, there was my mother and that encounter. And God brought all of those images so back God to my mind. God worked on you all the That's time. That's right. And he showed me all those images in that instant while I was kneeling. And he said, all of these have a part in what you are doing right now. Whoa. Now, now that's, con that's God to me. That's, was that convicting to you oh, at that moment? Oh, yeah, but I mean, I was in by then. Yeah. And that was just him affirming more and more, you're in, you're in. So um, that began a journey. Now, you understand, or you don't understand, you wouldn't know, but I was kicked out of high school in Southern California, not allowed to go back to another Southern California Why high not? school. Why not? Because I started this time? a bunch of riots. Oh, okay. Uh, and so they said you can't go anywhere. You can leave the area, but you can't go here. So are atheists, I'm not I sure, wasn't even are an they atheist angry? Then. You were not even atheist? No, 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 I was just an idiot. That's Do you all. ever wonder if all this happened because your parents went through a divorce, if that had an influence on it, the way you ended up? It may have. In fact, it likely did have. I mean, they, they struggled with their own issues. Right, uh, as parents, and I'm not blaming do. your no, parents. No, no, and I don't either. It's um, just the typical, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's, it, it shakes your world up, makes you wonder and question stuff. So I have a grandson that is uh, about nine years old that says, says he's an atheist. Mm -hmm. He's had a tough childhood. There's been some stuff in his life that have been tough on him. Mm -hmm. So when you encounter that and you get to see him like that, us as Christians want to just shake him up and say, hey, there is a real God. But what is the real way... To, to talk like that, you know? Well, there was, a, there was a movie that I saw, a TV series some years ago, and I don't remember the name of the series, but uh, in the series, somebody said, I don't believe in God, and the response mm -hmm. was, that's all right, he believes in you. Mm. Okay. And that's a good response. You know, even you, for an atheist that Even moment? for an atheist, because if they're an atheist, you're not going to convince them of anything, especially right. in one conversation. Mm -hmm. But you can evidence your confidence in the existence of God like my mother did. She said, I can't answer your questions, but I know he exists because I talked to him this morning. Wow. Well, you can't. An atheist can't even, he, they, he can laugh at you, but he can't, certainly cannot uh, defend that position. How do you defend an experience, right. you know? Right. What is love? How do you define, how do you choose True. what love is and what love isn't, is? So uh, the best thing you can do to an atheist is not to push on him. You can ask them good questions, like how do you know there is no God? Uh -huh. And if you ask that, they go, well, uh, I just don't believe there's a God. So you're actually taking it by faith that there is no God. Mm, I yeah. take it by faith that there is a God. Right. We're both on the same plane, I on get that it. level at least. Right. Yeah, there it takes is more, more evidence. faith for me not to believe Correct. as to believe almost. Correct. So today you have a huge organization. You're, you're doing well. What, what is it that you do exactly with I am? Yeah, International Association of Ministries is, is who we are, and we affectionately use the word I am I to am identify that. Double and, M, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, to, I guess compare it shortly. You have churches that are part of a denomination or a part of a fellowship of churches, even if they don't call it a denomination. Uh -huh. And so that group of people uh, will help a church get started, help it to grow, maybe teach it, instruct it, coach it, counsel it, so that a church can become vital and uh -huh. prosperous. Mm. But when it comes to what we call parachurch ministries, mm -hmm. if you have a, a call from God, for instance, as uh, Stephanie, uh, one of our, Christina, I mean, one of our uh, leaders do, to help single t teenage pregnant moms. Mm. So they're pregnant, they're a mom, they're still in high school, and you, you have a calling, you have a passion for helping them. And so in her case, she set up a, 
uh, and actually it was three or four generations before her, they set up a mm. program for pregnant And teenagers. how is it that you're helping that kind of a program out? Sure, sure. So what they need is the same thing a church needs. They need to get under a nonprofit. They need to have a, a 501c nonprofit status. Uh -huh. They need to have fellowship and encouragement. They need to have coaching and counseling. Uh -huh. And so um, that's what we do. So if you have a calling to do a ministry or a charity, and it's a Christian one, then we will come alongside of you and and be your nonprofit. Kind status. of like that mentor help nonprofit that kind of umbrella over yes, people that yes. need help. You have an instant nonprofit status if you're once you're accepted. Uh -huh. We handle all of the money. We handle all the le legal uh, requirements. We handle all the liability insurance. Oh, all you have good. to do is just go. So if anybody stuff. would like to get a hold of you, what is your website? It's iamm.net. I A M M <laughs> dot net. Uh, and you can go there and see all about our ministries and you can go down to the bottom and say as I am for you And if you have a heart to do a ministry and you want to take it to the next level Meaning it's not just a spare it. time sometime thing But you really want to move it on to the next level mm -hmm. and you're going to raise support for it You're going to you're going to really organize it well We'll come alongside and help you every Sounds step of great. the way David thank you so much for coming to the show and I just want one word of you One word as encouragement for our viewers today. What would it be? Never give up, never give in, because sooner or later, you're bound to win. Wow, so you hear that too. Never give up, never give in, because sooner or later, you're about to win. That is for you, and we encourage you. Let us pray for you, 855-515-5550, or go to our website, which is barbtv.org. And what I'm seeing right now that some of you are kind of like just kind of wrestling with this. You actually know that God is real, but God's really not who you thought he should be. And what I'm encouraging you to do is look up instead of out and God will show you the difference. 855-515-5550 or go to our website, barbtv.org. God loves you and so do I. Estimated 16.1 million adults aged 18 or older in the United States had at least one major depressive episode in the past year. Important too. So I was able to both meet my birth mother and my birth father. They never got together. I feel a missing piece. And what's missing in your life right now? And can God fix it? We both know He does. So, so when our identity though is in Christ and in the one who created us, there is that hope, like you were asking earlier. Is there hope? Absolutely. And because I looked those at those identity pieces because I didn't want to be on a spiritual roller coaster, up and down, up and down. And um, I wanted to be anchored in and be secure as a mother and give that to my children. Wow. So in the, fact, I came to Christ through a song. What was the song about? Into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Oh.